So let me bring to the show Althea Espinosa, Fixed Income Strategy, Saxo Bank. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us this Friday morning. Thank you, Alexandra, for having me. I'm actually extremely happy to have you on the show exactly today because we are just witnessing a major selling when it comes to the bond market. Uh, first of all, what's your take on the jobs data? Uh, and secondly, do you think that the Fed's path in terms of rate hikes is already written, considering also that uh, actually the, the, the labor market is pretty strong? Well, what the jobs data are telling us today is basically we are already looking at full employment in the U.S. So we have uh, 5 million people unemployed and there is uh, 10 million jobs uh, out there that needs to be filled. So that's to, that to us, uh, it looks very much like a full, uh, uh, full employment. Um, but at this point in time, I think that the bond market is selling off the way we are seeing for the simple reason that uh, the average hourly earnings came out month on month at 0.7%, which is above what we have seen the previous month and also well above the average that we have seen in the past 10 years. So definitely that is a sign that inflation is going to remain sticky and sustained for a long time and the Federal Reserve will need to be aggressive in terms of monetary policies. So definitely interest rate hike in March and it will continue and will combine rate hikes with quantitative tightening. That means there is going to be upward pressure throughout the whole yield curve. Uh, on the other side, I just wanted to take a look at European bond yields. Uh, of course, all of this uh, happened after the ECB meeting, which was probably a little more hawkish than um, expected. Uh, this is what we're going to ask you, of course. And then, of course, we saw uh, Bank of England less aggressive than expected. I mean, uh, 25 basis points rate hike instead of 50 basis points rate hike. And this is because Andrew Bailey decided so. Of course, the governor of Bank of England and most likely they're going to um, rate um, hike rate, sorry, additionally in the upcoming meeting. So we do see the 10 year Italian at 171.71% uh, we are talking about yield and the spread between uh, the 10 year Italian and the 10 year German bond in 152 basis points. So what is signaling the bond market? Well, what's happening with, uh, in particular with the BTP and boom spread is that uh, there was already elevated rates volatility uh, that was uh, increasing also the volatility of the BTP um, and Bund uh, spreads. But yesterday, something really important happened, uh, which is that the ECB didn't push back on rate hikes uh, for uh, this year. So basically means that uh, um, the, the ECB is opening up to the possibility that uh, its outlook uh, concerning inflation is going to change throughout the year. So that implies uh, an early end of the APP uh, purchases and uh, also an uh, early uh, 2022 rate hike. Obviously, that is negative news for bonds in the periphery, in particular for uh, the BTP, because they carry a, a high beta. But Alexandra, I want to raise a very important point. The BTP boon spread is extremely important to ECB policies. Um, if we see the, the BTP boon spread widening up to 200 basis point, that could be a reason why the ECB would stall with its tightening agenda, because obviously, um, a spread of 200 basis points means that uh, financing conditions are tightening faster in Italy than in Germany and obviously the ECB wants to avoid that. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. So do you think at the current levels um, Italian bonds and also the 10-year German bond is back um, into positive territory? Uh, we're always talking about yields, of course. It's up about 31.97%, almost 32%. This, we're not used to see uh, the 10-year German bond in positive territory in regards to yields. So do you think that European bonds are actually more attractive to investors? Uh, well, not at the moment. I think that uh, U.S. treasuries are more attractive uh, to investors uh, than uh, European bonds. European bonds uh, remain uh, uh, quite expensive in terms of if we compare them, for example, with uh, U.S. treasuries. Uh, so definitely 
the, the rise that we see in yields uh, could keep uh, sustained. And we believe that uh, the 10 years uh, bond yields uh, will rise as much as 0.5% uh, throughout the year. And if the market is right and the ECB is going to hike uh, by 40 basis points at the end of this year, it's really possible that we see also the two years uh, German yields rising above zero uh, percent. That means that uh, all other sovereigns uh, in the euro area will need uh, uh, to reprice accordingly. And at that point, uh, they might be more in interesting uh, in terms of risk and reward uh, scenario. Uh, while we're talking, of course, the 10-year T-note yield is approaching 1.9%. We're at 1.89 so far. Do you think there is a ceiling in terms of yields in the, in the very near term? Well, we have seen uh, in the past few weeks uh, um, that uh, there is a strong resistance around 1.88% in yield. Uh, today, we broke above this level. So it wouldn't be surprising uh, to see yields rising. And the concept uh, um, behind uh, yields rising is that the market needs to price not only interest rate hikes, but also balance sheet uh, uh, reduction, which is putting uh, uh, pressure on the long part of the yield curve. But Alexandra, the rise that we are going to see in that part of the yield curve is going to be much slower than what we've seen uh, since the beginning of the year, because like just we said, uh, there is still that risk and reward uh, um, scenario that makes uh, U.S. Treasuries appealing. If you take 10 years U.S. Treasuries uh, um, hedged against uh, the euro currency, you will still get uh, around the 100 basis points over the Bund, which is uh, quite a substantial gain. Hitting the 1.9 mark so far, the 10-year T-note yield 1.903, up about 4% in pre-market action. Of course, post uh, jobs data and uh, as you just outlined, few details in terms of uh, participation rate and, and not only, you just highlighted the United States average hourly earnings month on month plus 0.7%, uh, well above, by the way, expectations and well above previous data. Uh, this is the current situation at uh, 14.54 Central European time. Thank you so much, Althea Spinozzi, Fixed Income Strategy, Saxo Bank. Thank you so much for joining us. And of course, have a great weekend. Thank you very much, Alexandra, to you too.